Hi, my name is Angela Marafino. This is a Their Story podcast. Today we have Greg Ake and Rob Noth from Level Effect. Hi, guys. Hey there. How's it going? Going well. How are you? Doing good. I'm great. Would you two like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, I'll go first. I'm the CEO of Level Effect and one of the lead instructors who wrote the course curriculum and uh, come from a background in the United States Air Force, then transitioned over to defense contracting. And for the most of that time, I worked at the National Security Agency for about 15 years in the government and have since gone out to the private sector. And currently my daytime job is at Huntress Labs, messing up hackers day. Awesome, Rob? Yeah, that was Greg, by the way. And yeah, this is Rob, thanks for having us. Um, my background is in programming, engineering, and computer science. So cut my teeth doing web development back in the day, and then slowly, somehow, magically migrated over into cybersecurity. I got a job at the National Security Agency as well, doing a lot of cool malware stuff and cyber operations. And it was a happenstance meeting that I met Greg there doing an internal project where um, he was the lead analyst and I was the lead developer brought on to uh, do a cool internal thing. And uh, one thing led to another and um, here we are. That was a story on how cyber babies are born. (laughs) (laughs) That's what that sounded like. That is true. I I was going to say, it's like, I've never heard that story. That's cute. No, that's really awesome. Also, I like the part where you're just like, I work with malware. Yeah. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> no, I know. I know you're I've I've heard you refer to as the reverse engineering badass. So I'm just going to let you oh, have that, wow. have that yeah. title. I'll, t- I'll take it. I'll wear that belt. I, I yeah, imagine yeah. it like a wrestler belt. It's just like this big giant thing I can sling over my shoulder. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm a connoisseur of all sorts of malware. That's awesome. All right. So let's talk about level effect is why we're here today. And I'm very excited to have you both. So thank you both for making the time to speak with me. So you've clearly both had had quite a journey into where you are now. Do you want to tell me a little bit about how you came upon one, the name two, deciding to move forward with coming out with level effect as a new bootcamp for cybersecurity? Yeah, that's a good question. The first one maybe is a little bit more embarrassing than the rest of that story. Rob and I are terrible at naming things is really where that came down to it. And yep. we we started out as a product company developing an EDR-like technology that focuses on uh, network forensics in relation to all the process data that a typical EDR would collect. And uh, that, it, that product has been since acquired. But... Um, really we sort of took the first principles approach and we were like, we need to get to the right level to cause the right effect. And that was sort of the terrible, you know, like uh, segue into our name and it sort of stuck and, and nobody has openly mocked us for it. Maybe until some, re- you know, listeners get in on board and start commenting, but yeah, yeah, till now, but so far it's, it's worked. And uh, during the beginning of the pandemic, we were getting ready to sell the product and we wanted to keep this going. I have a background in teaching and education and we just sort of thought to ourselves, you know, the market really needs a uh, good cyber training. There's a lot of cyber training, there's a lot of cyber training vendors out there, but they don't, they're sort of missing one key component and that is truly making it realistic. Mm -hmm. and applicable for people to be able to do the work, right? There's a lot of training that will teach you things, but those things they typically teach you always don't get you the job because you need to be able to get in, get hired, and be able to help an organization reduce their risk right away. Uh, You know, they don't want to onboard somebody and say, we need three more months of, you know, on-the-job training to get you up to speed. So we really just started, again, taking a first principles approach to what a business is need today to fill that gap, and we started coming up with our curriculum. I think beyond that too, you can throw a rock and hit like a red team training vendor. And Mm -hmm. there's so much of the offensive training out there of like, this is how you do pen tests and this is how you audit a system. But there's, uh, you know, a fraction of really, I would say anywhere near the level that it needs to be on from the blue team side, the, the defensive side. So that was another sort of goalpost that we had in mind. Can we build good defensive training? since it's lacking in the industry. And to Greg's point, can we make it actually modern and using real, you know, modern malware techniques? Like that's where my stuff came in. And then the analysis approach that Greg is used to teaching people, 
you know, we can't teach them necessarily how to be a good analyst. That's sort of, you build that over time with experience and being exposed to it. But what we can do is give them some methodologies and some tools that they can access for free, you know, open source technology instead of these big expensive EDRs and vendors and stuff that most people have never seen in their lives. So, you know, yeah, that's a lot of good stuff there. That's excellent. Yeah. And I, I love, by the way, how you came up with the name. So don't be too hard on yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was an excruciating ordeal at the time. Uh, I've, I've pretty much tried to give up on any kind of naming branding efforts in the future if I can. Yeah. Well, you you hit this one on the mark. Let, let's just keep it at that. <laughs> so you kind of talked about, right, like how you're solving the, the gap of, right, the training and kind of mm -hmm. what, what needed to happen next. What do you think really gives your particular boot camp the step ahead? Yeah, good question. I think it's it's unfortunately it's a it's a lot of things. I don't know if we have, have the time to really break down the nuance <laughs> because it, it goes into some of the general themes of the training industry and how it's sort of leading people astray. There's a there's a lot to unpack. But I think specifically a lot of courses try to teach to standards that are more knowledge based instead of practical based. So if you look at a lot of boot camps and you start reviewing the curriculum, it's very apparent that it's it's aligned towards say a certificate such as Security Plus, which I don't have any problems with Security Plus, but it's an 800 page plus book give or take, right? And that's meant to be like an introduction and the average threat ops analyst or security ops analyst level 1 or level 2 don't need to know the vast majority of that information. So I think we had to take the approach as, you know, quote unquote, the experts, we had to say, what are we not going to show people, right? Like that's, a, I think, a different approach. A lot of schools try to like, let's show them all these tools, let's show them all this cool, sexy stuff. And yeah, it is sexy, but that's not beneficial to the person nor to their employer in solving real problems. So sure. first and foremost, we identified the abilities somebody should have. What should they be able to do for an employer and be able mm -hmm. to communicate and articulate? And then we had to say, well, what building blocks or what, what knowledge and skills should they need to be able to, to accomplish those abilities? And then what is just not important? You know, and, and, and I'm sure a lot of people would look at our curriculum and say, well, you don't even teach you know, cryptography that in depth. And you know, I would argue what level one analyst is looking at like elliptic curve ciphers and you know, all these things and doing that kind of analysis. They're not. Yeah. So with all that being said, we focused on how do we ramp up somebody's skill to the appropriate level to reduce risk for a business. And they do that by being able to actually do something and not being able to just do it, communicate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to add a, a big component of our of our curriculum in every module we do is report writing. And it's not that we make students write, you know, pages and pages of reports. It's just every lab, we try to bring it back to reality by saying, OK, you're going to have to now communicate this information to your peers and potentially the community at large. You better be able to write this and explain it and, and use the right vocabulary and not look like a fool in front of, you know, in, in, in the meeting room when you're trying to talk about this, this technique or this attack. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of students have come back after the fact and told us, you know what, one of the biggest things that helped me in the class was like practicing writing reports. And my boss now says, like, you're really good at writing reports. And that's to us just kind of the key thing that a lot of people miss it's 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 boring it's not the sexy tools like greg's talking about but it's a it's a required skill that is uh difficult to really do without practice you can't just here's a blurb on how to write a good report go have fun so you know the practical skills i think is really what sets us apart yeah i, I think i think coupled with that we don't focus our curriculum on like Boolean assessments. Did you get A, B or C correctly? And you could sort of fumble your way through that. Like everything in the course is you have to do it and demonstrate it. We give you a compromised host with malware on it. We don't tell you what the malware is. We don't give you intelligence. Like you, we've taught you how to triage a Windows box. You know what's normal, you, you know what's abnormal, you know about auto runs, you know about the boot sector, you know these things, find the malware. And then now, 
educate me through your reporting. Tell me the instructor that you know what the hell you're talking about. Sure. And, you know, if you have somebody who's never done cyber and then within three months, they're providing you 10 pages with evidence, screenshots, and their assessment of how this binary operates and the static and dynamic analysis they've conducted on it. Like it's, it's like, okay, you know, you know, you can go help a business triage and remediate the risk to their organization. And that's, right. that's our goal. I love that. And, you know, I think it's so good that you guys are providing like a, a real insight into what it's like a day, a, a day of life that a position, right? Because I know a lot of people go into it like, oh, here's all the fancy cool tools. And then they go to get a job and they're like, what is this boring reporting? stuff i have to do right <laughs> yeah like, i just look at why? detections all day and then click yes or no and right <laughs> you know write a um, snippet on it yeah yeah so like you know no illusions about the fact that that is going to be part of your job at some point and it's great that they can turn that around in such a short amount of relatively short amount of time compared to you know mm -hmm. not going to the boot yeah. camp and, and trying to figure it out later. it's not perfect yeah it's three months long so like what could you possibly cram into you know, building life skills in three months, it's, it's hard to do. And we don't, we don't, you know, put a lot of pressure on students to totally ditch their lives and like go headlong into this, but it is a requirement. You know, it's, it's hard if you really want to make this career switch or get into this career, the boot camp route to me is it's the optimal sort of a more efficient solution as opposed to like a four-year degree or, or, you know, on the job training would be great and all, but then you have to go through the hard knocks of like learning everything with starting from scratch. So the right. boot camp is like that middle tier where you get fast exposure to a lot of topics. And that's sort of why we also chose that route as opposed to like little one off trainings here and there. Like, let's get this journey put together, put people through the pipeline. And then when they come out, they're going to be at a SOC level one or two uh, ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would say it's really interesting. We, we sort of set out to create an entry level like boot camp, really for the people who are like, you know, I'm in marketing and I want to get into cyber or, you know, I work in the services industry and I want to get into cyber. And we've actually had more and more people coming who are in the industry. We've had threat hunters who've been doing it for a year to two years and they're still like blown away on some of the topics and things we cover. So I think we're able to do that. And going back to your question, what separates us apart is because we designed everything on a set of abilities at the end, we were able to just remove noise from all the weeks to get you there, right? Like yeah. a lot of boot camps try to show you like every week is like, a, let's learn something new. Let's go through the, through the motions of learning some tool. And then you never use that tool again. So the tools and processes we teach you day one we will talk about on the last day right you will you you know i would rather teach you five tools instead of 20 but you are nearly a master of those tools by the end of the course and and that's really what we try to focus on and again the reporting just reinforces that they understand why they're using those tools and what the data is telling them in a non-opinionated way absolutely so that's a great that's a great lean into my next question which is kind of like who are the people who are attending your your courses right um, like where do you see and you just kind of said basically like who but also like what are the results from them graduating from your program and obviously right you're focusing on a, a particular role but do you have any examples of like students getting specific jobs or feedback yeah a lot of our analysts are getting a security analyst is a general term that you'll hear in job reporting but mainly in security operations roles we've had a few go on into the consulting realm one of our students who got what is called our like gold status. So in our certification, our capstone, it's a seven day challenge where you have to remediate a live box. There's an insider sure. threat on the capstone. There's, there's a lot of like practical real world things that they have to do. And if you exceed our standards and you're in the top like 5%, you go through a review board and then you'll earn our gold status. So it separates you from everybody else who just sort of got through it and was able to succeed, which it's still very hard capstone this is not a multiple choice test you have to be able to do the job to pass it there is no shortcut around it but that individual is now leading up threat hunting for a large consulting firm that does a lot of work in southeast asia so students if they are putting if they have the aptitude and the drive and the perseverance like they're going to be successful and we have you know a lot of students who are doing that and that same student by the way was in graphic design before he took the boot camp yeah, yeah. 
he was I not could, previous cyber or IT in any, yeah. any way. Sure. If if I could pivot and sort of say what I think is different from like an overall process and how we sort of look at training is I'm disgusted with this cyber industry as a whole from its like marketing sure. and like the snake oil and the next gen AI magic that's yep. pumped into everything and and everybody's trying to sell you don't need it's not going to take as much time it's going to be here's the easier button and all we're seeing is we're getting more detection we're getting more alerts it's just more busy work that's just my general feelings on it and i think the the cyber training industry is very much the same there's a lot of students we talk to who are like so i heard i'm going to make a hundred thousand dollars in six months after i go to your boot camp because there's three million jobs open and it's like okay let's unpack this and one of the things we go over with students is that it is very hard to get into this industry. And we don't, I mean, I think my sales tactic is to not sell people to take my boot camp. Like I almost want to discourage them because it's hard. We're we're not gonna we're not gonna take the easy approach to anything, but right. we're gonna be here and we're gonna go above and beyond if you're willing to put and invest in yourself. Sure. I think a lot of boot camps out there are stretching the truth by telling people it's just as easy as showing up and going that's, through the motions. And, yeah. and I think anybody who's on this side of the cyber industry knows that that's not how this industry works. Yes, there are people in the industry who are just getting by, who are hiding in the shadows, who are just, you know, they're the friend of the CISO or something like that. We all, we've all seen these cases, but by and large, if you want to propel yourself in your career, you know, you're doing it yourself. You know, you're going to find mentors, you're going to find friends you can lean on and help you. But you know, if, if this industry is very interesting in that if you are identified as a person who doesn't help yourself, you will not get far and nobody's going to put out that helping hand. Um, and we talk about that. Yeah. And I think one of the misnomers about this is if there are three plus million positions open, all I see is there's three million organizations that are dealing with cyber risk and they're hoping to hire somebody to help reduce that risk. And that is challenging for somebody who wants to get into this industry because having a less than a year experience and only being to a boot camp is added risk. Sure. So that was one of the challenges we took upon ourselves, right? When we went to the abilities based approach to our curriculum development, how does somebody who has less than experience, a, less than a year of experience, show that they can help reduce risk immediately? Right. That's why businesses are looking for unicorns. And it's hard to get a job in this industry because everybody's operating a little bit on fear. Mm -hmm. If I hire the new person, it adds risk. It slows down our ability to go through the detection queue. We get hit. It comes back to me that I'm not improving our risk posture. I'm, I'm degrading it by these junior hires. So we share that with students. We talk openly about it. You know, we, we give them a path on how to get a job. We, we do resume reviews. We do mock interviews. We have resume templates. We take time out of class to meet with them, to do those mock interviews and, 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 and calm their nerves. We talk about a strategy on how to do essentially open source intelligence for jobs and how to investigate businesses and find your way in and find your way to be able to communicate, socially engineer, you know, your hiring process, right? We have these skills we just learned, let's employ them. I think all of that combined just puts people in the right frame of mind to understand the work they have ahead of them. And we have such success with our students. I think our last statistic was 92% of our students were employed inside of six months after leaving the course because they understood at the beginning, the first before they started the course, the challenge that was ahead of them. They, they sure. showed up to class knowing the mountain they were going to climb yep. and they invested in us knowing that we would be there to help them. Absolutely. And I think that's the biggest thing that we could do to really mess it up. I mean, everybody has good curriculum. Everybody says they do real world labs. Everybody says we've got custom cool stuff or we have instructors who have a really great background. But at the end of the day, just like being a parent, nine tenths of the work is showing up and being present. Mm -hmm. and being there to help out and to listen and to provide that guidance. And we go to great lengths to make sure that students get that. Yeah, I love that. I love that you're upfront with them, right? Like it may be easier to change careers into cybersecurity than say going to medical school. However, <laughs> it's not easy. You do have to put in the work 
And like you said at the beginning, right? Like we're not necessarily asking people to like stop everything else, but if you can stop a lot of things like going out on the weekend or hanging out with your friends for a couple months and putting in that extra time outside of just class to do right your labs and, and mm-hmm. writing reports and doing the training and going to, you know, one-on-ones with you guys and getting that extra time and also networking and building your resume and doing all these things, it's going to make the difference. Like just going to your course, like you said, right, isn't enough. Like just getting the information isn't going to be enough. No, it's not. It's, it's, I mean, the information that we provide is good in the sense that we as experts have removed noise. So it's like, right. just like in, in that respect, it's like, go through these motions. We'll provide you the education. We'll provide you what you need to know. We'll provide you the tools We'll provide you the templates, but you will have to do the work of building your own brand. We will be there to provide the feedback. We'll be there to nudge the rudder in the right direction, the, the, the one to two degree, you know, adjustments on that big ship. But after three months, you're going to be in that right heading, you know, and, and we follow up with students. When you join our boot camp, we bring people into our businesses, Microsoft teams. We have a, of course, a public discord channel, mm-hmm. but all of our students are our teams and people from our first cohort are still in our teams and still talk to us. So once the boot camp's over, it's not like, thanks for your money. Have a nice day. Good luck in your career journey. We're still there. They still like, I'm literally one chat message away. Like, Hey, what is this? I've got a job interview tomorrow. What do I need to know? And we'll say, Hey, you know, this really aligns with that lab and that module go back, review it, and then hit me up and we'll do, we'll do a, a call for half hour and I'll quiz you on it and make sure you understand what that technology is. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. Can you give me a brief or give us a brief kind of day in the life of what a, a level effects student would look like, or maybe a week in the life, whichever is easier? Yeah, probably a week because it really depends on the individual and, sure. and what they're sort of coming to the table with their, their, you know, native skills, if you will. But the way a course week is broken down is there's material that the students have to consume between on-demand videos and labs. And the labs are foundational. They're an exposure to a tool or topic, and they are foundational in that they're trying to get somebody comfortable with where something is. So for instance, we have fundamental labs on Wireshark, and it might just be about opening up Wireshark and where the buttons are. And then we have another lab that goes over display filters and what those mean. And then we have another lab that might cover setting up Wireshark for analysis. That's all like, why are we adjusting these columns? And so at the end of it, somebody should be familiar with how the tool works, where the tool is applied, and when to use the tool. And if they've done all that work, come Monday, we usually start out the week with a review of the knowledge that they've gained and then pivot immediately into real world challenges. So we as the instructors would then say, okay, you've learned those skills, let's apply it to a real problem. The security team has notified us that a host was compromised and we believe this host is beaconing out to a suspicious domain. We need you to get any indicators of compromise and identify the binary that was downloaded So the analysts, and mind you, this is in the second day of the first week of class. Right. (laughs) So it's it's a very, very (laughs) fast paced environment. But, you know, within the first few days of class, they're identifying malware. They're looking for, you know, you know, they're extracting binaries from traffic samples and we're exposing them to the concepts of, you know, command and control and how malicious binaries are acquired and how do we reconstitute, you know, that, that you know, forensic data to understand, you know, sort of the, the lineage of the TTPs that the adversary used. Right. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. You dive right in, Rob, Mm -hmm. anything to add there? Yeah. I mean, just more logistically, right. The, this, the course is set up like a night school, right? Mm -hmm. So like Greg said, we, we rely on like the weekend as your bulking period where you ingest a lot of content at, at your pace over the weekend, hopefully you're home from work and you have time, you know, to focus on that stuff. And then during the week, Monday through Thursday, we meet in the evenings. And then we do about two, two and a half hours of the, the intensive kind of lab work and more discussion going over the stuff. It's, it's open for everybody to ask their questions. You can stay after class and you'll, you can talk to the, the instructors for that week. Which, by the way, it's not just Greg and us, right? Just so everybody knows that it's not just us two talking. Right. We also have Anthony and Will who support the lecture time, right? And, and the instruction, as well as teaching assistants, which 
At this point, they're two of the former students who earned the, the gold certification that Greg was talking about, but they're not the ones kind of in front teaching. That's we, we kind of feel like we should be the ones doing that and leading the course instead of, you know, people kind of, sometimes people get the idea like, why is a, why is a student teaching, you know, and so that's not, that's not the intent, but they're really good students and they are now working in the field. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to come back and pay it forward. And they wanted to help out and say, Hey, I know what it's like to be in your position. I was just there six months ago. Right. So, you know, they're, they're there to really just help us with labs and troubleshooting and that kind of thing. Sure. So. I'm sure that's super helpful to help the students, like not have to bang their heads against the walls for like, you know, right. two hours, if it's two hours 30 students. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> yeah. 30 students is one of, one of us can only do so much. So we need the extra help. We try to keep it as, as small as a, of, of class as we can because of that. Like we yeah. don't want 60 people in this, you know, web conference room because we don't want to lose that sort of personal feeling or, or intimacy of, of, of the learning experience. And, and it just becomes like a webinar. Right. You know, that's, that's what we want to avoid. So keeping the classes small, having more teachers and instructors in there is beneficial for having this like intensive lab environment where we throw you right in and let you try to try to tread water as fast as you can. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't think we mentioned it, but this is uh, you know, hundred percent remote boot camp. Yeah. You're not mm -hmm. in person. You're not, you don't do both yep. or in person only is what I meant. And I love the fact that you offer, right. The mock interviews, the resume review, the advice, the upfrontness without saying like, but you have to pay extra for that version. Because I no. know that those boot camps exist where it's like, if you can come in person and you do the live thing every day, then you can get the resume reviews and the in-person interviews and all of that. And it's kind of like, but everyone needs it. It's like not someone's fault that they can't come in person and then they don't get the extra help. Like that seems kind of weird. Yeah, I think, you know, in it, and, and what's interesting is there, there needs to be a better way for people to assess boot camps because uh, there's a lot of boot camps out there who operate that manner that are essentially, you know, there's some that are on demand in the sense that you never talk to an instructor and you just have a mentor every two weeks that you talk to for an hour. And sure. it's like, you know, I could just give you a list of YouTube videos and you could save yourself $15,000 if you'd like, you know, go on LinkedIn and find some friends in the cyber industry and find and get a mentorship network there. You know, that's free. Yeah. So you know, there's a lot of things tugging at it, you know, the price point, what you try to do, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, this is probably like the bad business decision. We're not trying to become rich off this. We don't want this to turn into like millions of dollars off of people sweating and trying to, you know, change their lives. Right. right. You know, we can't do it for free, but we, we don't want to abuse that approach and the needs of the industry. Right. So, right trying to find, find that balance and trying not to be a really expensive, you know, for lack of a better term, a list of YouTube videos, right? It, it's about showing up and being present and being that mentor and walking people through the challenges and providing them the insight to cut through the noise. You know, I've got 18 years in this industry and Rob's, I, I don't remember what years was that. You're like 15 or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've failed a lot. Mm -hmm. We've messed up professionally. I've, I've Greg more than I, yeah. Pro and that's probably true. <laughs> you, you know, like I've, <laughs> I've, I've messed up some detection rules on a WAF and, you know, dropped a few hundred thousand legitimate sessions. You know, I've done these things. And, and I think, you know, if, if a lot of cyber people are being honest and open, they would realize they've, they've messed up before and, you know, to air as human, but I mean, that's what people are paying for, right? Like, why would you buy, you know, an equivalent used car value price for training, right? To not have somebody who's been through the trenches, who's failed and succeeded mm -hmm. to share those wins and those losses and, and how to negate that and then how to communicate in a right way to get people to understand what you're capable of doing and somebody to sit down with you and look at your past and say, okay, you're a long haul trucker. Let's talk about your strengths and how that applies to this industry, because there's value in the interpersonal skills. There's value right. in your life, you know, your past life experiences you know, if we went after everybody who is super technical, we would all just be staring at each other's shoes in this industry. And that would work well if we didn't work for a business that had business use cases that had business people who were non-technical that we had to communicate with. Right. right. So that, I think that in a, a very large nutshell is what we've tried to do. And it's been hard, but it, we've seen the success. We see students 
doing what we hope they would do. And, and they're changing their lives. They're getting the jobs. They're upskilling. They're moving laterally from, you know, tech support into cyber. And that's what it's about. You know, I think expensive is relative, right? Like for a young person who may say, maybe I'll do this instead of get a college degree, who also like, you know, has a part-time job, like, yes, it is kind of expensive, but it's not as expensive as going to school for four or more years. Mm -hmm. And I always try to remind people that like, it costs some money, but in the long run, it's not like the debt, for example, that I've gathered going to college twice and like not even using those degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you look at it, definitely like, like an investment, like you're saying, Mm -hmm. it's better than looking at it like a ticket for a movie or something, right? Right. Or it's just gone. Right. The the investment is in yourself, just like any education. But like I was talking about earlier, like the optimal and most efficient route can get you a lot further, a lot faster than doing the, you know, doing the full college route, going for a comp sci degree or, you know, there's cyber degrees now too, which uh, we have mixed feelings about, but you know, yes, that's, that's exactly right. Like if, if you, it's all about how you look at it and we do offer, you know, as much as anybody else can, we do offer help with financing and there's, you know, there's help there, but uh, we do know that it is a pain point to put the credit card number in and, 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 you know, to do it, but we encourage everybody, you know, if you're in that position where you're serious about this, then this is kind of some of the biggest bang for the buck you can get. Absolutely. And, and Greg, to your point earlier of, right, like it is possible to acquire information in order to, you know, get your, start to build your skills in this industry. If you want to take a year or more and mm-hmm. just r- collect resources passively and get a mentor and say every week I'm going to watch a new video or read a book yeah. but you know it's based on the individual right like they have to decide how quickly they want to change careers or what kind of path they want to take and what that looks like for them because I know right this is a what is it two hours every evening yeah 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 I and and you 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 touch on a point there that I think is is appropriate as to why that approach is you totally could do it, but it's still going to be hard to get a job if that is your goal, because to learn something in a, in a small sort of um, vacuum, right? I watched a YouTube video series and it taught me how to do like traffic analysis, right? Like you could get good at that one skill, but that doesn't translate to you understanding the strategic implications of a full intrusion Mm -hmm. and how that applies to like business risk and how to communicate that effectively. And that's right. also where people are failing. I'm new to cyber and I'm trying to get jobs, but people aren't taking me seriously. It's, and, and I talk to my students about this. It's very easy to identify a resume without even reading years of experience by just how they communicate about their cyber skills. Because mm-hmm. they will say, you know, like one of the bullets might be, I can analyze DNS traffic in Wireshark. Me as somebody who's doing this for a while, I would say, well, why would you pick that? Is that the only thing you can do? Because Mm. Wireshark could do literally thousands of things. Right. If you can articulate to me the value of you as a warm body sitting in my sock using Wireshark for forensic analysis, and you can convey the strategic impact and you being able to identify malware, beaconing, malicious activity, and how to escalate that, and you Mm -hmm. can talk about that in an interview, you're hired even if you have three months of experience. (laughs) Because that's what they're trying to hire for. They need somebody who understands the problems, right? Can do the work and use the tools to convey the risk so that decision makers can make decisions. Yep. Yeah. Like it's it's the cliche like bigger picture problem Mm -hmm. where people can't, people who are new to the industry, they don't understand the big picture. So they can't talk to it. So that's sort of you know, to keep being the same drum, that's kind of what we try to do in the course is teach people like this is the bigger picture here. This is why you're not getting the interview because you're not conveying this to, you know, these prospective employers. They need to understand that you get the big picture, not just how to run a tool and, or, you know, hack a box on, on, you know, whatever platform your favorite platform is. That's, that's definitely a big yeah. issue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it- totally get it. And I think, you know, it's it's hard and confusing based on, right, like the number we talked about at the beginning of open jobs mm-hmm. um, and the, the fact that there are recruiters and the fact that recruiters will search for keywords like Wireshark. Mm-hmm. But then once you get into the interview and then you get more interviews, yes, the term Wireshark on your resume got you in, but 
what happens next when you get to the other other interviews when they start to ask you right what are you doing with it and why yeah. and how is it different than someone else right so it's interesting i mean just some use cases that we've dealt with in our course and this has been sort of like a barometer to that i think we're doing the right thing we had a student who by by i think like week four or five in the course we start recommending people to start doing interviews by then we hopefully have their their resume done and of course we're working at the speed of the individual willing to get us the information and set the meetings with us to, to to get that done but we had a student who didn't get a junior security analyst role because they said they were overqualified and they didn't have cyber experience before and this is the first month in the boot camp because <laughs> by then we've already gone over advanced windows like students are analyzing process execution memory they're you know looking at like you know like analyzing auto runs and looking for footholds in the registry like that's the first month of the course you essentially can triage a windows host for malware Right. Uh, another use case, we had a student in the second to the last week of the course, we have just an analysis challenge week where you're supposed to bring all your tools out of your tool belt. And up to that point, most of the course has been a team effort, right? We work in groups, we switch the groups up, we work as a whole class on a problem. But that week, everybody has five challenges to do and each of them take about three to five hours to complete and they have to write a complete report with identification executive summary technical analysis screenshots and evidence and remediation steps that all must be present to pass just that week so you have you know 30 students completing i think it's five reports and we grade that but those reports are able to be shared out in their interviews like this is what i'm able to do I'm, i've only have you know four or five months of experience but this is the work i do we've had a student come back and say that the hiring manager said that they cheated and there's no way that they wrote that they're not they own there's no way they've only been in this field less than six months and you know they're they're doing that level of work and i just i just think that just goes to what's broken about the training industry, that it's a it's a revolving door of look at all these tools and shiny buttons, and nobody really stops to think like, do junior analysts understand how Windows works <laughs> right. without tools, without an EDR telling them where something's bad? Like we don't provide our students with alert logic and detections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have to write their own detections in the course, but we don't like, hey, here's the queue, clear the list move on to the next day. You know, I could teach somebody to look for footholds. I could teach somebody to respond to, you know, Mimikatz executions. And I, you know, we could do that in minutes. We don't even need hours or days of training, uh, but taking the time to understand how the network, the infrastructure, the operating system all works together in concert to make, you know, our modern life work. Then we start adding the cyber on it. And then we mm -hmm. start investigating it and pe peeling it apart because now they understand how it should work. So it's easier to find the things that are off. Absolutely. Here's something potentially interesting. When we first started the school, we were interested in trying to make it more of like a trade school because that's how we saw it. It, it. it wasn't like an academic pursuit. It was like, this is a trade, like a carpenter or a plumber. And can we get somebody through the program, kind of like a trade school is, or like a project-based, very hands-on uh, process. There were legal reasons why we legally could not become a trade school, right? For taxes okay. and like business organization reasons. <laughs> and um, so we were like, darn, we can't do a trade school. So we, we have to go this boot camp route. But maybe that gives some people kind of insight into how we approach our school. Like that's how we think about it. Yeah. We think about it like you're going to be a carpenter. Right. And you're in a room with a bunch of journeyman carpenters right now, and we're going to teach you how to build a house. Sure. Um, and your tool belt is yours. Whatever tools you want to pick and use, you can use whatever you want. We don't like, for example, in the classes, we don't make people use the tools unless we're specifically teaching on a tool. But for the reporting, for for your final exam, you can use whatever you want to use. You can Google, download whatever you want. to. You can write your own tools. The point is, at the end of the day, is there a house standing right. that we can we can inspect and make sure that you passed it, right? That's, I love that's that. the end of it, yeah. I love that analogy. And, it, and it, I think that really helps it make a lot more sense to other people because, right, anyone anyone can come in and grab a hammer and start helping stuff, out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to know how to do it all that day, but you'll have a good idea of like carpenter level one by the yeah. time you're finished with that course. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> That, that, <laughs> it makes that's, tons of sense. 
that's goes back to the whole resume point. I can use a hammer. I'm yeah. not hiring you for my entry level. You know, like anybody, I could, yeah. I, could, I, I could take almost anybody in you know two three hours, show them how to use Wireshark at a fundamental level to do DNS analysis. Like, right. so what? Like, how does that help? You yeah. know, concrete yeah. examples. One of the things I did want to ask earlier is, oh, we were talking a little bit about a day in the life of the student or what it just looks like for a student in the course. I've seen your platform. Do you want to talk a little bit about your platform and why like that is useful? Because I know sometimes, right, it's just like, we're going to show you stuff. You can't keep any of it for reference later, but you know, this is, this is nice for today. <laughs> I might have to cut that part out, but <laughs> please don't. Yeah. But do you oh. want to talk, do you want to talk about like your platform and kind of how you help students and, you know, do you let them keep some of the materials to reference back to because I know right sometimes if you don't use it you lose it a little bit and you need to go have a yeah. refresher. So that's a really good question and there's a lot of training out there where you know once you're done you know you're done you don't really have a relationship with the boot camp you don't have you know anything to sort of pull you back and from a business perspective that's not smart but also it's not the right thing to do for the industry it doesn't help that student on their journey it doesn't help them when they're at the job and they need to reference something so we do make VMs available. Uh, our platform virtualizes VMs in the browser. There's a lot of other training providers that are doing that now. It's been it, two years ago; it was pretty new, mm -hmm. uh, but now there's a lot of people rendering, you know, machines in the browser and stuff. Really, at the end of the day, that allows us to ensure there's a consistent user experience, right? One student who's more, you know, knowledgeable and, and technical, right? They're going to fly through the labs, and we have students who are newer to this who are struggling with VMs on their local machines and their BIOS passwords, and they don't have virtualization enabled. So we we get past all of that those problems and get into just focusing on the tradecraft about what to be done. So it just it just makes the learning experience more consistent uh, across the board. But to your question specifically, signing up for a course, you have the course for life. The boot camp is coming on its second year, so we haven't been around a long time, but I think we're on version five of the material. Okay. It is constantly being edited, revised. I mean, we have like a dumpster of like old labs that we're going to try to make available to alumni, you know, like, hey, here's extra cool labs, just like a dumpster to go play in there and break stuff. But we wanted it to make the platform a place where people could come back, reference, interact, learn new tools and tradecraft. I mean, we have a lab on the new Conti ransomware based on the leaks a week ago. That was fast. That, and so analysts are already analyzing, you know, new people in the industry in my class are doing a lab and they can articulate and talk about Conti ransomware techniques and tradecraft and how to identify adversaries doing staging to set up ransomware breaches. That's amazing. You know, like... Uh, we have a log4j. We have a we have a log4j vulnerable box, and students mm -hmm. are scanning and getting shells on log4j, and then analyzing what that traffic looks like in Elk, and they're writing detection logic to identify log4j. So that's just like the foundational training we provide, mm -hmm. and that goes back to you know the relevancy. When that student goes for that job interview, they're talking about things that hiring managers themselves are trying to grasp. It's new. It's fresh. It happened a month ago, you know, our students can demonstrate how a log4j vulnerability works, how to exploit it, how to patch it. They can talk through that and demonstrate it. Right. That is not a typical junior analyst interview. And that's pretty much been the consistent feedback we've got from people who've gotten their foot in the door to say, like, I know more than my peers who've been doing this for a couple of years. Like, I'm now leading efforts and educating others that I work with, and I've only been here for three months. Yeah, you know, the example of someone having an interview and, and either saying you're overqualified or you cheated. <laughs> like, yeah, there's, there's no way you unreal. made this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what do they do? That? They're like, Here, just... call my call my dad, Greg. Like, yeah, it's like, well, that's kind of strange. I, I did offer that. Like, hey, yeah. you could have them call me if they're going to think I'm, you know, lying or whatever. But it, it is it is interesting. Like, what, a, you know, from like an instructor perspective, like I'm like, I've harmed you in a way, right? As an instructor, I've like overly prepared you to understand a problem set. And now people aren't taking you I seriously care too because, much. because yeah. you understand, like, that's a weird place to apologize. Like, I'm sorry we taught you well, you know? Like, like you're having to tell them to like slow down and kind of act like they don't know the answer first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And then like, I don't know. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Maybe that's a module ad sandbagging <laughs> an interview. <Yeah. laughs> 
don't have yeah pulling knowledge. your punches in your first cyber interviews yeah. <laughs> but i mean yeah. that that just reminds me and it's a good i mean for anybody out there who's getting a technical interview i used to work at booz allen hamilton and i used to do technical interviews all the live long day there to come work on our government contract and and one of the techniques I've employed myself that I think everybody could use, and and you'll and it naturally happens to people who've been, you know, in more senior roles or they've been around for a while. They, you know, I've got five years under my belt. They're comfortable talking about this stuff. But particularly for those who are wanting to get into the industry or who are still trying to get that first job or maybe trying to go to your second job, turn the interview into a conversation. Please God, do you know you don't want to be stuck in an interview where it's like you know define the three-way handshake. You know that's right that's terrible place to be to then have to answer that. So I always talk to my students about how to receive a, a question like that, like a three-way handshake question. How do we pivot this into network traffic analysis? Mm -hmm. How do you ask that interviewer, you know, when, when was the last time you guys used uh, or had an incident where you needed to use Wireshark? You know, what were you dealing with? What are, are you able to share any like visibility issues you have? You know, are you only collecting at the perimeter, you know, the gateway? Or are you collecting, you know, that east west visibility? Like our junior students can talk at that level, which is like insane, but also the benefit is it, it sort of covers two things. That person doesn't have to ask you if you know what TCP three-way handshake is, if you rebuttal with a question like that, because they're like, right. oh, you understand what's going on. You know how this works. And secondly, it allows them to get to know you as a person. So you're sure. sort of getting that personal fit and your technical assessment done at the same time. So right. just everybody out there, like, when you're in an interview, turn it into a conversation. Ask questions to the interviewer. Don't go to an interview and just respond. Don't be reactive. Be proactive and get them to talk to you as a human. Turn it into a collaborative colleague discussion about incidents and strategic problems. And, hey, we're trying to hire because we've got this new product coming out and we need more people to help assess. Cool. What's the product? How does it work? What can we do? Oh, have you guys thought about using this type of a proxy to offload? You know, get into that kind of stuff it's going to it's going to change your your interview process dramatically backing up a little bit i wanted to say that when people ask me about your boot camp cuz obviously i have known about it since day 1 i tell them to go look at what you have now as the uh, like the free resources mm -hmm. and like you mentioned before right you're not here to make money if you were you would charge for that because it's an excellent free resource collection of material to go through. And I think that really gives people an idea of, is this really what I want to do? Mm -hmm. Like if, if I can get through that material and be like, yes, I still want to do this. This is awesome. Or that was super easy. Whatever they may think afterwards, it's a, at least a little self-check of like, yes. Okay. Confirming, but also, right. Like you put the time in to do that and offer it up, which is amazing. So, you know, why did you do that instead of like, right. Building it into your curriculum so funny enough a lot of that material used to be in the curriculum and it was a lot okay. of the foundational material and we wanted to get more to brass tacks in the course and make it more impactful more quickly we wanted more time to do more intermediate advanced stuff in the course so that foundations the free cyber foundations course we have on our platform uh, was the first week of the class it was sort of like around the world like what is cyber so that is a prerequisite to joining the boot camp. So we know that if somebody's completed that, you know, we could just start digging into the cool stuff. And we give students, you know, you know, everybody has access to that well in advance. And again, it's a great way for people to get to know us, what we're trying to do, get familiar with the platform. And, you know, if it's not right for you and you want to go somewhere else, like no harm, no foul, like that's no skin off, uh, uh, off my back. Like, I just hope that people are finding what works best for them and they're successful. And, we're actually working right now to update the foundations. We're adding open source intelligence, some more network analysis stuff. We're adding some more vulnerability analysis stuff, some more hands-on labs. So I think we're adding three or four more hours. So it's going to be about a 15 to 16 hour free course, and we're going to have a digital badge. So there'll be a quiz at the end. You don't have to take it, but if you take the quiz and, and, and satisfy it, and it's not going to be an easy quiz because you have to have studied the material to pass the quiz, but you'll get a digital badge from us that says you've completed the cyber foundations. And again, that's a prerequisite to go into the boot camp. So just trying to provide some material out there to, to help people along and, and really assess is this is this for me? Like if you hate foundations and maybe you hate it because you hate <laughs> my voice and that's fine. I hate listening to my own voice on my videos. And but you know if you really just don't like the concepts of the work and the type of trade craft that it entails, like you know, hey, at least you didn't waste money 
figuring that out, right? right. Like, I don't want that. Exactly. I don't want somebody to be month two in our course and be like, oh, this isn't for me. Like, that's, right. I mean, like, yeah, it sucks to lose the sale from a business perspective, but I'm, I feel bad that I wasted their time, but more so I've wasted time that I could have spent on other people who are passionate and who really want to learn. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's not to shame somebody who says they don't want it. It takes a lot of guts to realize, you know, this isn't for me. You know, there's, it's, yeah. it's worse if you just try to force it and just be a miserable person. Cause that's definitely not, well, not what sure. this industry needs, but yeah, I mean, all that wrapped up is really the reason why we wanted to make the foundations and, and make it accessible. Yeah. I think, you know, again, right. So for anybody listening, just go take the foundations course if you're interested like you could do that right now you know and and it's always it's like you're getting it's getting updated mm -hmm. so if you've taken it in the past you might want to try to take it again and see what's changed because i know some of these conversations in your own head about switching careers can last a very long time so that's another reason why i think it's great that you put that together because again right you could spend over a year just trying to figure out basics mm -hmm. and, and if you're interested in what that means is this something that you currently or in the future plan on offering to like teams or you know like business groups or like you know already existing cybersecurity teams that may just need like extra learning yeah i mean you just generally corporate training using our material yeah i mean that that's that's definitely an option that's not something we have sought out you know we're sure. we're trying to constantly hone the material and you know i think we're getting close to what sort of our dream vision was two years ago, right? It's, it's taken a while. And, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of irons in the fire. There's lots of plans in that respect. So there's going to be a lot more stuff. One thing that we're doing is we recognize we're not the experts in everything. And I don't want to be a training company that just starts making training to fill gaps because, Hey, I really like your cyber defense analyst bootcamp. I'm sure you could do a really cool course on XYZ and I'll, you know, somebody will pay me the money to make that. And, some businesses will do that. They'll just start making material and it's really not that good because they've built that brand. We're going a different approach. We're bringing other training vendors that we vet onto our platform that we're sort of saying like, you know, they're better than us at doing this. Let them sort of lead the way and do that. And mm -hmm. the first company is GTK Cyber. We have one of their courses on our platform right now. It's a data science okay. course for cyber analysts. So if you've ever been interested in data science and you're in the cyber game, and you want to learn how to you know, build ML models to detect domain generating algorithms. You want to analyze anomalous like process data to look for malware. Like their course covers all those foundational stuffs if you're new to you know, data science and they're bringing more courses onto the platform. And you know, we're going to rely on them to build that course content that we're not experts in. We're going to focus on what we're good at and we're going to do it to the best of our abilities. And you know, build a community around our platform to allow people to share that knowledge. And we're making it a requirement. You know, if you're going to use our platform and we're going to co-brand and work with you, like your material has to be free for life, including updates, mm. you know, no more of this gatekeeping or you're going to pay me $4,000 and in two months you lose access forever or you don't get the training materials or you don't get the VMs. Like, no, if somebody gets access, they have access for life. And, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to do those types of things. I think there's a lot going on in the industry right now. A lot of changes, a lot of companies doing a lot of really good things about making courses and training really affordable. So we're trying to do our part. So you don't just offer the fundamentals course and how to get into cyber knowledge. Do you have that data science? Do you have any others? We have a few uh, free webinars. We actually have a list of some free courses that we're going to be working on. Uh, I don't want to promise anything because, you know, we're a small <laughs> team and we got a lot going on, sure. but we are trying to have other free content on their free courses that cover core skills. But again, we don't, don't want to overstep other people, you know, like, mm -hmm. like I'll, I'll call them out, like TCM security is doing a good job, like really good quality courses, really affordable and accessible to a lot of people. Fantastic. We don't, we don't want to make our own pen testing course. And, you know, like there's this right. sort of, you know, that's out there. So we're focusing on what we're good, good at and we're letting people, you know, get to know who we are and if they deem it's worth their time, then, you know, that's awesome. That's, that's all we could do at the end of the day. So I know you're you're busy guys, but what's next for the level effect? Like where do you see this going in the future? I think for for what's next for the future of level effect is just to keep growing more course content, uh, find more partners to fill the platform with different categories of cybersecurity and focus on cybersecurity. Our focus is never really, I don't think ever really gonna shift completely over to like the offensive side. So we become another pen testing school. 
but involve sure. a little bit more of that because a lot of students ask for that. Right. So yeah, just kind of growing, uh, growing it organically and not trying to rush to get to the end point where we can just slowly grow this, where we're helping, helping people get into the cyber career field. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we're not losing the quality of, of a small team that can put this all together and put their hearts into it. Yeah. And I, and I, I think, you know, to provide the different context to what you just said, because what you said is, is right on point. We're at the stage now, two years in, we're like, I'm like blown away by like our course content and I'm biased of course, but I'm, I'm just like so impressed with what the team's been able to like pull off and the, the epic amount of work and research that's gone to this to make it fresh and applicable and, you know, using real world, you know, events that have just recently happened into the course. We're working on building up the bandwidth as a company, you know, growing to where we can do more and, you know, building that ability to engage with the community more. You know, we really wanted to make sure the product was where we felt comfortable, where it should be, because, you know, like I, going back to what I said before, like I struggle a lot with how this industry sells and markets things. It's very few, there's very few companies who, who do it right and do, who do a good job and they're honest individuals and, and they care about the community. And like I said, I called out TCM security. That's one that comes to mind. Like you could tell they care. They're doing, they're doing a good job for the community. They're providing quality content and accessible prices. So you know, very much in the same vein, we want to do the right thing as, as best we can with what we're trying to provide. And long term, my personal goals are to upend the business model of boot camps, the in person boot camps, mm -hmm. and, and how they charge and how they're conducted, right? I, I want to change that right. because it's not, it's scalable from a, just taking people's money, but it's not scalable for the community and what we need to you know help reduce our overall risk to you know us as individuals our employers and our nation and other nations you know we have other students so to me that that is my my goal anything that can help get us towards being able to do that is is what we want to do uh, on our website if anybody is interested in our boot camp and they don't have the funds or means to be able to afford such a such an offering we do have a scholarship that we let students in 100% free and we do it based on our overall student count, right? So we internally look at our, our revenue and, and essentially our students who are paying to show up, they're paying it forward to their colleagues who otherwise wouldn't have these opportunities. So we're trying to do our part to give access to people who can't afford things like this and, and putting them through the paces and helping them, you know, get that job that they've been yearning for to change their life, hopefully. So if there's anybody out there who, who who's in that boat, please go sign up and we'll reach out and try to help you get in there. Thank you so much for sharing that. And yeah, definitely, you know, for anybody listening, they're just people. It's just Greg and Rob and, you know, you've got Anthony and other people helping out behind the scenes, but, you know, don't be afraid to just email and say, Hey, I'm interested, or I just want to talk to you about mm -hmm. this. Nothing is concrete. You know, you submit an application. It's not a, it's not a hard, fast, like decision there, you know, just people that want to help you and yeah. help you move forward. So I always recommend that, you know, anytime you're considering something like this, just have a conversation and, and see mm -hmm. what it's all about and talk through like your background. Cause like you said, right. Somebody could be a, a truck driver, um, a waiter, mm -hmm. you know, anything, an athlete just and decided to switch. And, you know, there are applicable skills that you've had in whatever career field you've been in that will transfer yeah. over. So. If you reach out and talk to us, you will be talking to one of us. We, we've we consciously not decided to go the route of sales staff or, you know, admi admissions coordinator, you know, that kind of thing. Like you will talk to a course author, a course instructor. We'll show you the course curriculum. Like, you know, you know, we're not the whole intellectual property. You haven't signed up. We were like, we'll, we'll screen share. We'll show you the labs. We'll walk you through. We'll show you how it works. We'll show you all the material. Like if, you know, we want people to succeed and we've got nothing to hide. Absolutely. That's so great to hear. And yeah, more people who get told in interviews that they are overqualified and cheated. Yes, <laughs> yes please. That they have cheated. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for sharing all of this, guys. Thank you for being here. And I look forward to checking in with you again in the future yeah. and, and hearing more about what's changed, and what's new. Our pleasure. It was such a good time chatting with Rob and Greg. I know they're super passionate about what they do. So very happy to have them here. And I look forward to hearing back from them in the future. For more information on Level Effect, follow the links posted with this session and feel free to contact Greg or Rob.